Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. We finally did it. We filled up 2017 Panini Contenders football on a Saturday night. We were watching a lot of football. We'll discuss that throughout the break. This is uh, pick your team number tw uh, 11. The next pick your team, number 12, this is 11. The next one, number 12, is the last case. So go and get it, jazbeeshobbyland.com. You might not be too late, even if you're watching the replay a day later. There's the case, our second to last case. And here are the people involved in this break. Here we go on the 13th. And there you have it, folks. Who's here for this break? I don't even know who's here for this break. I know Tyler is. Tyler's here for this break. I know Ryan is here for this break. I saw Darji earlier. I know Darji's here. Kyle Kramer, maybe? Karen? James? I saw James. All right, well, however you're watching, whenever you're watching, thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. All right. Oh, James is here. There's Tyler. Great. All right. So there are our 12 boxes right here. At least, at least five autographs per box on average. Sometimes there are points. All right, good luck, everybody. Here we go. So, let's get everyone's thoughts. What did everyone think about today's games? And sorry, I have, I have a lozenge in my mouth if you're wondering what, why I'm not speaking as clearly. Um, what, everyone, what did everyone think about today's games? The We just finished watching the Titans-Patriots game. The Titans uh, falling to the Patriots. Patriots winning 35-14. to 35-14, to 14, blowing out the Titans. The, Eagle, the Eagles winning a close one, 15-10. That was uh, the score line may not have been pretty, but that was actually I feel like a pretty pretty exciting game. Tyler Spears saying terrible Falcons should have won. I was going for the I was I was going for the Eagles. So for those of you who know, we we enjoy discussing a little bit of. Casual wagering here and there, just for fun, for entertainment purposes. So in the chat, that's what that's what I had going. I I had put um, a little bit on the the Eagles plus three, and on the money line plus one forty, and for the under under forty one and a half points. I got all of those. I was pretty happy with that because I took a took a longer shot on the Titans plus fourteen. The Titans money line plus 600. And the under on Tennessee at, at uh, New England, under 48 points. Guess what? The game ended with 49 points with that that extra touchdown by the Titans. Boo. But you win some, you lose some. Just like case breaks, folks. Just like case breaks. Sometimes you're a winner. Sometimes you're not. But we try again because it's fun. Collecting cards or collecting experiences, whatever the case may be. The Eagles game uh, was interesting. Nick Foles really is, uh, you know, he, he hit the first pass that he threw. Jay Ajayi putting the ball on the ground. There's a lot of things to be concerned about next week for the Eagles. Not sure if they're going to be moving on. Wow, nice Aaron Donald to start things off. 65 out of 99, NFL Inc. That goes to the Rams. Derek Slavic with the Rams. Nice, Derek. But that, that Eagles offense was pretty rough. You know, the running game is strong. But if Nick Foles can't really make things happen with that arm, there's Quincy Wilson, rookie ticket autograph for the Colts. That'll be for Karen Steele. 
It's going to cause problems for the Eagles later on. Oh, these round numbers cards will randomize left or right on those at the very end of the break. There's some that are, I think there will be a, at least a couple that are serial numbered. Those will be randomized separately. Any guesses on this uh, redemption right here? For bragging rights? Tom Brady moving, moving on. Patriots not affected by any of the any of the drama. There's Von Miller. Playoff ticket insert. And that is out of 249. Oppo Joe Mojo going to the Broncos. John B with the Broncos. Nancy wants Camara in this. That's true. Nancy got the Saints in this, so she's she's got a vested interest. James saying Yoku, Ryan saying the one per case Wayne Gallman. Oh, and our first Mac Hollins. Rookie ticket autograph, Mac Hollins. That goes to the Fly Eagles Fly, Jerry Bennington. What should we set today's? I think we were still going to set it at two. Actually, I'm going to increase it just a tiny bit. So for today's today's line, Kareem, uh, sorry, not Kareem Hunt. That's what Sean B is guessing. Uh, Marlon, Max, Mac Hollins's, Mac Browns, or Mac over under. Two and a half. So feel feel if you're in this break, feel free to uh, guess over or under on it. The last couple times, last few times actually, we've been under the entire time. We started the line at like three and a half, and then we went to three, then we went to two. I'm increasing a little bit to two and a half, but they've all been under so far. Should I go over again on it? I think I will. Over. That's what I say. On the record, over. We got Austin Eckler. Oh, if you're setting at three and a half, Tyler Spear, I will take under all day long. Um, okay, so Volleyball Nancy wants Alvin Kamara. James is thinking Yoku. The one per case Gallman says Ryan. Sean B saying Kareem Hunt. Power also saying Gallman. It's going to be. Ah, oh, you forgot this one. Rookie ticket autograph. TJ Watt. Turn down for Watt for Patrick Edwards and the Steelers. We'll see the Steelers in action. Manana. I think they're the early game, right? Yeah, they are the early game. All right, nice first box. Yeah, Nancy's incensed. What? I was told there would be chimeras here. Next box. Good luck, everybody. All right, so any, any other final thoughts on the games? I guess, uh, let's see. Let's, let's go over, let's go over the, uh, let's see what ESPN has to say about the Falcons-Eagles games to put a bow on this. Philadelphia's defense. Staged a last-minute goal line stand, and Jake Elliott atoned for a missed extra point with three field goals as he beat 
the as the Eagles beat the Falcons 15 to 10 Saturday to move to the NFC Championship game. Despite being the underdogs as the number one seed, the Eagles 14 and three showed plenty of moxie in the tightest spots of the fourth quarter. They stopped six seed Atlanta after it got the nine or got to the nine with a first down. Then on the fourth down. From the two, when Matt Ryan's pass sailed over Julio Jones' head in the end zone. It was the first playoff win for, the, for Philadelphia since 2008, and they will host either Minnesota or New Orleans for the conference title next Sunday. So they still have a home game, so that could be interesting to, to talk about next week, how much of that of, of an effect that will make. The Falcons, who so memorably, memorably blew a 28-3 second-half lead in last year's Super Bowl, won't get a chance to atone for that defeat, not this year anyway. I thought there was a pretty tightly, tightly fought game here. Um, Matt Ryan went 22 for 36, 210 yards and a touchdown. Nick Foles going 23 for 30 for 246 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions either. It was one of those games where the stats don't look very good in this game. But I feel like it was a pretty, it was, I think, I felt like it was a pretty compelling game. Jay Ajayi with that fumble at the very beginning. That got, I'm sure that got a lot of Eagles fans nervous. Devonta Freeman didn't really do much on the ground. But he did, he did get five catches, 26 yards, and a touchdown. Julio Jones, nine catches, 101 yards. No TDs for him, though. All right. Next one, Bengals pride saying, apologies to all the Eagles fans. I was wrong about the game being over by halftime. There's DeMarco Murray, playoff ticket. I don't know if DeMarco, how much DeMarco Murray would have helped in this uh, Titans-Patriots game. Maybe a little bit. Maybe they would have covered. We've got Nathan Peterman, cracked ice. 14 out of 25 rookie ticket auto for the Bills. Karen with the Bills. Nice. I wonder if he still has a shot at the quarterback job. Probably not, but I guess it depends on who they get in the offseason. He might still have an outside chance. Yeah, Sean B. is right. Can't have 10 carries for 7 yards by Devon Freeman. Hope to win. Another redemption. More guesses? We got playoff ticket autograph. Jacob Abercrombie and Fitch. 30 out of 99. That goes to Karen and the Patriots. I think they also own Hollister. We have Josh Johnson. John Johnson, 81 out of 99. That's for the Rams and Derek. All right, and we've got a Saint. Playoff ticket autograph, Austin Carr. 98 out of 99. Not exactly the Camara that Nancy's looking for, but this is a start. Definitely a start for Nolens. I think no relation to Derek Carr. We got Deshaun Hall, rookie ticket autograph. Panthers, that'll be for Royal Four Speed. Ryan with that one. MVP contenders, Tom Brady. He very well could out of 199 Patriots. 
That'll be for Karen and the Pats. Big emphatic win by the Patriots. And uh, just the Patriots unperturbed by any of that drama surrounding their organization. All right, the redemption. The only guess was Taiwan Taylor by Sean. That's the only person guessing. But it's not. It's rookie ticket RPS, Jamal Williams for the Packers. That'll be for Karen in Green Bay. I'm not sure yet, Sean. I think I'll have. I think I'll have. Uh, well, I'm going to be thinking about my picks throughout this entire break. I may get to my final picks around these boxes back here. So stay tuned. It's called the professional teaser, folks. Gets you to watch until the end of the break. What will Joe pick? If you care about that sort of thing. If not, you can just fast forward through. You know, it doesn't matter. Unless you're watching live. Unless you're watching live. Patriots. Patriots, Patriots. Foxborough, Massachusetts, Dateline, Foxborough. Tom Brady passed for three touchdowns, 337 yards, and the New England Patriots cruise past the Titans 35-14 on Saturday night tonight to advance to their seventh consecutive AFC Championship game. Seventh consecutive. Uh, the Patriots will host the winner of the Sundays of Sundays tomorrow's divisional. I guess for a lot of you, it's tonight. Tomorrow's matchup between Jacksonville and Pittsburgh, which we'll talk about more as we get closer to the back of that box. It was Brady's 10th career postseason game with at least three TD tosses, moving him past Joe Montana for the most in NFL history. James White caught a touchdown pass and ran for another, and Danny Amendola had 11 catches for 112 yards. Titans took an early 7-0 lead, but New England scored 35 straight points to take control. Mariota completed 22 of 37 passes for 254 yards and two touchdowns, but was under duress for most of the second half. He was sacked eight times, which is a Patriots playoff record. Mariota also rushed for 37 yards. Derrick Henry, 12 carries, 28 yards. Not gonna win. Uh, the Titans are not gonna win ball games like that. I guess they were behind too, but still. Deion Lewis with 15 carries, 62 yards. Eric Decker at six catches for 85 yards. Corey Davis. Is this a breakout party for Corey Davis? Five catches, 63 yards, two touchdowns. And if they won, if they won, your Corey Davis cards would have been skyrocketing. <laughs> Hey, great job for the Titans. They got they got to uh, they got to New England. They beat the Chiefs. They've got something to build on. I guess what's what's interesting though is that does this buy another year for Mike Malarkey? Mike Malarkey was probably if the Titans didn't win that Chiefs game, Mike Malarkey is done as head coach of the Titans, right? I mean, he, I feel like he was already on his way out. So. That win may have given given him another year, which may not be a good thing. <laughs> I don't know. Titans fans, talk to me here. Jake Butt. He's a tight end. That joke never gets old. John B. with the Broncos. Ah, there he is. Tight end. He was born for this position. All right, we got Chad Hansen to catch a pass. 
Chris Hansen catches Predators. Chad Hansen catches Passes. Jets, that goes to Royal for Speed. Ryan with that one. They're looking for a new quarterback. It's not going to be him. We're going to see him tomorrow. MVP contenders, Russell Wilson, 92 out of 99. They're Seahawks changing up their offense. A lot of different coaching changes, etc., etc. Might be for the better. Protect this guy. Seahawks, that'll be for Kyle Kramer. Kyle Kramer with the Seahawks. They need, they need this guy back. Healthy. Great season for the uh, Eagles. Let's see what they. I mean, they could. I guess they could still, still win it, but it seems unlikely. Montrevious Adams, rookie ticket auto. For the Packers, another one for Karen and the Pack. And another Saint. It's playoff ticket, Adrian Peterson, who was there for half a second, out of 249. Still a Saint in this set, though, Nancy. Yeah, I, I, I feel like something something bigger could pop out of here. We're seeing signs. We're seeing signs. And another Mac, Mac Hollins. Rookie ticket on card auto, Mac Hollins. That's two. Oh man, just one more. And I'll get the over. Nice. Will we get the over? Stay tuned through the rest of this break. I know, it's exciting, it's compelling. Man, will they, will they get another Mac? Oh man, will they get a Mac? Corey Clement, rookie ticket auto for the Eagles. Fly, Eagles, fly. Uh, we saw Fournette yesterday, Sean. I think in uh, yesterday's contenders break or the day before that, we finally saw an on-card auto Fournette. But I think that out of the, this is our 11th case, out of the 11 cases that we've done, I'm pretty sure we've only seen like two. So it seems to be pretty uh, relatively rare, at least for us. Folks, our last case of contenders is up on jazbeeshobbyland.com. So if you missed out on your team the first time around, do not miss out on the second time around. I think Aaron, James, Karen, Chris, Masoner, Juan, Tom, Karen, and Juan again are not missing out. I'm pretty sure those are contenders orders. So that's all on jazbeeshobbyland.com. We have plenty of... Uh, Plenty of football, though, on the website, so check it out. Flawless Collegiate Football is available. We have Preferred Football available on there, too. And I think eventually, later this month, we'll probably have uh, probably be putting together some football mixers as well, some high-end football mixers. So keep an eye out on jazbeeshobbyland.com for all that fun stuff. Tyler Spears saying there better be a train whistle in this case. Well... Whistles are relatively rare in products like this. Breaks like breaks like preferred football that's on the site right now. Panini prefer, preferred football. You can expect train whistles in that. It's a little bit harder in contenders. Although I think our first two or three cases, we got a printing plate in each case. And then we went on a dry spell after that for a little while.
Arthur still looking for 2015 Crown Royale in 2018. I don't know if that's I don't know if there's even any left in the world, Arthur. All right. Next box, here we go. There's championship ticket, Russell Wilson, 89 out of 99 for Kyle and his Seahawks. Playoff ticket autograph. Nine out of 99. Desmond King. Oh, you guys see? I'll see, then you're good. You got two cases of that? I think you may have the biggest 2015 Crown Royale collection in the world, Arthur. Wow, there it is. Rookie ticket autograph, Deshaun Watson. You don't see a lot of these. Darji with the Texans. The on-card auto of Deshaun Watson. He'll be back. He'll be back. And in full effect next season, I hope. You are welcome, Darji. You don't see a lot of these. This might, that, that, I think that might be maybe our only third, third or fourth one. Out of the 11 cases that we've done, not too many of those out there in our cases. Sterling Shepard, NFL Inc. 41 out of 99. Not quite the Evan Ingram that you're looking for, Ryan, but I like Sterling Shepard. Oh, is that your set? Okay, so you've got like two of the three that we've pulled, Darcy. Congrats. Yeah, we haven't pulled many of those of Mr. Watson. Move a little more quickly here. There's Mike Williams out of 99. And there's Ben Boulware. Rookie ticket autograph for the Panthers. That goes to Ryan. Pick up the pace just a little bit here. And Matthew Days for the Browns. Jake Rosenbaum for days and days. Matthew Days. Oh, and 16. Nowhere to go but up, right, for the Browns. Chargers with a couple things there. Adam Wilson with the Chargers. Still at two on our Mac count for this break. This is Pick Your Team 11, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on a Saturday night. I am definitely running out of steam, but that is a good sign because that means you guys have, you guys have actually did, boys and girls, you've kept me busy all week, which is great. I thought there may be a little lull after the holidays. No, no lull. No lull. I came back from, from, uh, from all the New Year's stuff, and everyone was just like, Joe, what you doing? Let's break. We've been waiting for you. So, appreciate that. Wow, what? The Deshaun Watson, William?
All right, well, let's discuss the losers really quick before we move on to tomorrow's games. Uh, Falcons. I want to hear everyone's opinions. Where do, where do the Falcons go from here? What do you do? You're the Falcons. Got to the Super Bowl the previous year. Lost heartbreaking fashion. Had a, had a high-octane offense. You come back the following year. Not as high octane, but maybe a more a little more of a well balanced team, perhaps. But definitely issues with the offense just seems to not have clicked as well, even though the defense has been playing a lot better across the season. What do you do? I've never been a huge fan of Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, I think uh, not just because I'm a UCLA guy, but because he's he just hasn't really been super inspiring here at uh, when he was here at USC. I think both stints. I think he had two stints here at USC. But it, it's uh, it's not a – yeah, Sean B's like they lost Kyle Shanahan. I'm not a Steve Sarkeesian fan, so I think new offensive coordinator. I think that might be it. We're on the same page, exactly. Because my only ex my experience with Steve Sarkeesian is uh, just kind of – I don't and I don't watch too much college sports, but, you know, it's hard not to absorb that information. Austin Carr, Nancy starting her Austin Carr PC. It's hard not to absorb, you know, that kind of information around town, listening to sports talk radio all the time. And similar offensive issues. I think he's well regarded as a recruiter. <laughs> yeah, he, he does have a little issue with the sauce. I think he's cool. I think he's good now. <laughs> but um but yeah, but his his stint with USC ended kind of tumultuously because of, of the sauce issues. That he has. There's uh, Josh Malone for the Bengals. Nice championship ticket autograph, 23 out of 25. But he was well regarded as a good recruiter, a good college coach maybe. And at, at one point, maybe a up-and-coming offensive mind. But something just didn't... Maybe he... Just maybe something just didn't click, you know, uh, for, for him and the Falcons. Maybe it just wasn't a good fit. I don't know. There's Obi-Wan Kenobi for my Raiders. Raiders need a defense in here to fix that. Raiders going to Tyler Spear. There you go, Tyler. But, yeah, I think uh, – but, I mean, what, what are the Falcons – like, going into the draft, what do, what do the Falcons need in the draft? There's Chad Williams, rookie ticket autograph. They're going to draft later in the, in the first round. Uh, Tim H, Cardinals, Redbirds. Chad Williams for you. That's a start. I know, right? Tyler Spears, like, about time. I know. It's been a while. Hi, Tyler. Welcome to the break. <laughs> Here, there's an autograph to start you off. It's all right. We've got still plenty of autographs to go, folks. Do not worry. Uh, there's uh, Alex Smith. Is he done in Kansas City at 249? Might be. But, uh, but yeah, corner, defense, keep improving that defense. Offensive line, can never have too much offensive line. That's a good call, Sean. Uh, I mean, I feel like Matt Ryan is still good. He still has weapons. He's got, got running game. I think, I think it's got to be offensive coordinator because it doesn't seem like it's a lack of individuals per se. Maybe offensive line, but it's not a lack of individuals. 15 out of 99, on-card auto Amara Darbo for Kyle Kramer and his Seahawks. I like these rookie roundup insert autos. Nice, there you go, sir. But yeah, so I mean, yeah, I think that's what it is. It just feel it felt like coaching. You know, most for everyone was pretty healthy for the most part, right? You know, this guy has the same amount of injuries as he as he's always had. So it's not like he was too ineffective. You know, I mean. This guy had to had to run a little bit more, you know what I mean? You wanted to see him get more than like two yards, right, or whatever he got. But but that I mean again, maybe that's just a, that's a coaching thing. Maybe that's just offensive coordinator not getting the most out of those guys. But I, yeah, I think you just keep improving through the draft. See, I don't think they have too many pressing needs though. I think that's the thing. There's nothing where it's like, oh, that's it. That's that's what they got to do, you know? So I agree, Sean. I think it does come down to 
I think it does come down to coaching. I know, actually, yeah, Julio did play all 16, right? But I think it comes down to coaching. I think they may they may have to take a look at that. And all, you know, everyone can improve on defense. That's always a thing. But yeah. Might come down to that. Might come down to coaching. Maybe that might be the most immediate need. And they can kind of figure it out from there. Because I think, you know, Matt Ryan, they all obviously that team still has a lot in the tank. You know, and they could be sometimes you gotta take a step back to take two steps forward. You know, so we'll see. Uh, the other loser today, Tennessee Titans. Yeah, they just need to score. Well, yeah, going back to the Falcons really quick, Sean. Like, how many touchdowns did Julio Jones have this season? Like, I is I think I could count them on one hand, right? That's just ridiculous. And even in the preseason, I remember them saying, hey, more red zone targets for Julio Jones. We're going to do it. That's a thing we're going to do. I can count them on one hand, right? Three. Three touchdowns. That's just ridiculous. You know? Haters will haters will call Julio Jones a possession receiver, Sean B. And I like Julio Jones. But three touchdowns, that's ridiculous. You can't do that. You know, I know he's historically not gotten that many red zone targets, you know what I mean? But, come on. Come on. Matty Ice is a choker? No, he's Matty Ice. He's got ice water in those veins. What's up, Max? What's going on? No, I, I think he may get, I don't know. I think he got kind of, he gets kind of screwed by coaching. You think the Super Bowl was Matty Ice's fault? I don't know. I don't think. I mean, he, he could have. I guess he could have called out of some plays, but I don't think the Super Bowl is Matty Ice's fault. And I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that. You know, this season was his fault either. Steve Sarkeesian. I'm not a big fan of the. I mean, listen. I I might be on your side, SWAT. If uh, that he gets all flustered and everything. If the coaching changes and you get bona fide coaches in there, and if then he still doesn't do do well, then fine. You know, I, I could I could buy that. But at the moment, I don't see too much evidence of, of that. I think I think coaching really screws a lot of uh, has has kind of hurt Matty Ice a lot. Uh, yeah, we pulled a, we pulled a Deshaun Watson a couple boxes ago, Max. I'm not sure, Joe P. I think this might be this might be the might be it after this break. And I'll go through orders after this. See what happens. There's Matt Milano championship ticket. Feeling a little under the weather. Kind of hit a wall about an hour or so ago. So might try to sneak out of here a little early. 37 out of 49. Matt Milano for the Bills. That'll be for Karen Steele. Okay, so Titans. What does everyone think? This guy needs to be healthy. That's a big thing. What else? What? What? Where do the Titans need to go from here? Uh, I was saying this earlier in the break, but 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 I think like I think that that Chiefs win gave Mike Malarkey another an extra year or two, an extension. He might get an extension. There's championship ticket Legarrette Blunt, 1999. That's Prince for the Fly Eagles. Fly Jerry Bennington. But, yeah, Sean B. also says you coach and linebackers. But I think that Chiefs win may have bought Mike Malarkey a short extension. I don't know if, he, I don't know if he's, really the, he's really the answer. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of – with head coaches, you can kind of – it's clock management. You know what I mean? You see, see, the, see the clock management issues they had in this game. Boom! Rookie ticket auto. Second to last case of contenders football – and Royal for Speed has been buying the Giants pretty much, I think, in 90% of these breaks. This person the Giants looking for this guy. This is only the second one that he's gotten. But there you go. Another one. Nice Evan Ingram. Great bright spot for the Giants this season. And if they get that guy healthy, who knows? Uh, Edwin saying, 
Defensive line, pass rushers, better offensive coordinator. Yeah, so shore up, shore up that defense. Uh, there's Tanner Gentry, 24 out of 99 for the Bears. Adam Wilson with the Bears. <laughs> Andy, I love it. He logs in. He's like, just got back on. Matt count instantly. I set it at two and a half, slightly over. Two Matt Collins's, Matt Collins autographs thus far. I took the over as usual. Yeah, I agree with uh, I agree with Sean. Good wide receivers are solid. Yeah, the running backs are great. Offensive line is good. Uh, yeah, I think that's another team. You know, maybe shore up on that defense. There's Derek Rivers going to the Patriots and Karen. No relation to to Philip, I think. And um, and so like I think they just need a. Uh, I think they just need it's just they gotta improve that coaching. Maybe just more experience for more experience for guys like this. Derrick Henry just having more experience under their belts has got to be a good thing. Corey Davis looked like looked like he was he was that top draft pick that they expected him to be. You know, so that's a good that's a good sign as well for Corey Davis. A couple touchdowns for him today. There's Buda Baker for Tim H and the Cardinals. So. I think the Titans are actually in a pretty decent decent position. You know, they 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 could probably be battling with the Jaguars for for years to come in that AFC South. But they got they got to keep up with the Joneses. Keep up with the Jaguars. You know, they got to they got to have a good defense as well. Otherwise, might be might be sad times. Coaching too. Not 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 the biggest fan of of coach Malarkey. All right, last six boxes right here. I know, Sean. I, sh I should go work for a sports book. Yeah, QB needs to improve. Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah, I think Mariota definitely needs to get some more experience under his belt. Oh, right. Sean, how could you forget? How could I forget about Deshaun Watson? Deshaun Watson, healthy Deshaun Watson, healthy J.J. Watt. That could be, that could be dangerous too. I mean, I think that the Texans were well on their way until that. So I guess in the losses, I guess it should be relatively comforting for for these two teams to know that maybe they're not as far away as they as they think they might be relative to their losses and their performances. Yeah, Deshaun Watson. Is he is Deshaun Watson supposed to be back by the beginning of the season? Or by like preseason, by by camp maybe midsummer or camp or something like that? I don't know what his progress timeline is. But man, I mean, the the Texans just cratered uh, once the Sean Watson was out, and everything just fell apart. That's I mean, that's why quarterbacks get the big bucks, folks. Quarterback play is is so crucial. You know, there are few defenses that can that can outweigh the value of a quarterback. You know what I mean? But most of the time, you can always say, hey. A good, experienced quarterback is what's gonna what's gonna spell success. Not only in the regular season, but in the playoffs too. All right. Next box. Good luck, everybody. Oh, another redemption. Guess, Arthur, have a good night. Hey, Arthur, before you leave, give us your picks for tomorrow. Give us your picks for tomorrow. 
Pittsburgh, Jacksonville at Pittsburgh, New Orleans at Minnesota. We need to know what Arthur thinks. Put it on the record. So this one's serial numbered, so we'll randomize it between these two teams right here. So we'll randomize that later. No points yet. Did I just jinx it? I hope I did. Nice. There you go, Nancy. There's a good one. Marshawn Lattimore. This could possibly be your defensive rookie of the year. Arthur has Saints and Jags. Ooh. All right. Thanks, Arthur. Have a good weekend, man. I'll see you on Tuesday. There you go. Uh, Mike Bobby asking, SWAT is asking, do you think Patriots OC Josh McDaniel will be a good head coach? They keep talking about him. He was terrible in Denver. I think he was too young for Denver. I think he's learned a lot from that. You know, like coaching is – head coaching is hard. I don't know how many – how many of you actually played like – a higher level of college football, even if it was like Division Three or something like that, college, like college football, or got involved in coaching. There's Raheem Abuster. Um, Because you're welcome, Nancy. Because I'll tell you that head coaching is not just about X's and O's. Like you're the face of a franchise. Like you or you're in the press conferences. You're dealing with everything, right down to like what time you practice, how you practice, how you train. Like there's so much involved. You know, it's not just be like, hey, just just like hire smart guys around you. That's easier said than done. How many presidents have we said, oh, yeah, Clinton will be fine. They'll just hire smart people. Barack will be fine. We'll just hire smart people. Trump will be fine. Just get smart people around them. You know, Bush will be fine. Smart people around them. You know, Carter will be fine. Get some smart people. That never works. Head coaching is hard. Head coaching is tough. There's Alan Hearns. And so I think like I think it just comes down to like he he may not he may have not been prepared for the administrative tasks of being a head coach and really managing you know fifty plus players. There's Alan Hurts for the Jags, Alex Carmichael, you know fifty plus players, you know practice squads, contracts, training schedules, you know press conferences, coaches, position coaches assistants all down the line, making sure everyone's keeping their nose clean, blah, 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 blah. And so I think, hey, listen, some young coaches, they just have it. They could just, they're, they're ready for it. They're built for it. Another Mara Darbo for Kyle. There you go, Kyle. So I think that's my, that's my, that is uh, probably what happened with McDaniels. And also, yeah, Richard also pointing out that, hey, listen, quarterback was kind of an issue there. <laughs> But anyway, didn't he draft Tebow though? That might that might be the other thing. Maybe. But, but I think, you know, you go back to what when he went back to the Patriots. The proof is in the pudding. Look, look what he look what he does. He's the one that's, that's you know, that's creating all those plays, getting the most out of that offense, making sure Brady, old man Brady doesn't get killed. Playoff ticket, Dietrich Wise Jr., 6 out of 99. So, I think McDaniels, you know, is going to be one of the biggest sought-after coaches in the offseason. Oh, man, you know... Yeah, I really think it. Yeah, not not everyone. You know, there's not a lot of coaches that can just jump right in and be able to do it. It's tough. Nathan Peterman, tough for this guy too. Fourteen out of forty nine, draft class autograph for Karen and the Bills. See, Richard, that's Richard Sewell with a uh, McDaniel's to Tennessee would be a great move. I know they should just. But what I'm saying is, since the the Titans beat the Chiefs in such a fashion, you know. I think that bought Mike Malarkey a short extension, <laughs> which might actually be a bad thing for Mariota. But man, if McDaniel's had control of that, if McDaniel's took over that team, ooh. I mean, uh, 
Uh, redemption guesses? Did we do redemption guesses? I don't think anyone guessed. Gallman says DZ earlier. We have not seen a Gallman yet. Uh, it's another Jamal Williams rookie ticket RPS. That goes to Karen and the Packers. Karen, you're starting your Will, uh, Jamal Williams PC. All right, there you go. All right. We are chugging along here. Yeah, Malarkey is is gonna hurt Mariota's progress, I think. But. Sean, Sean was saying, I'd love to see Josh McDaniels in Detroit with that offense. I agree with uh, Tennessee, too. And then SWAT Brett, Mike Bobby saying, saying, Detroit wouldn't win with Jesus Christ. Are you saying Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball? Remember? Major League. Are you saying Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball? Are you saying Jesus Christ can't coach a football team? Come on. I'm sure he could. All right. Oh, and uh, let's see. Hold on. Someone was saying. Oh, it was Sean. Yeah, Sean's a Bucks fan, and he was saying earlier, a few minutes ago, that it kills you to see uh, John Gruden back with my Raiders. Uber jealous, he said. I I'm happy. I'm happy about my Raiders and getting John Gruden. Like, I think the head coaching position is is pretty uh, is pretty tough, as I was saying. You know, so. So I don't like necessarily like the idea of unnecessarily changing coaches all the time. I think it disrupts a lot of things. But and I, I think Jack Del Rio was okay. I think it was fine. You know, maybe maybe poor choices with those coordinators. But if you are going to make a move from Jack Del Rio, it has to be a guy like John Gruden. You know, I don't think the fan base is going to be like, oh yeah, let's let's try another Dennis Allen again. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's just, I don't think that's going to work, you know, for the Raiders. So if they were going to do something like that, do it, move quickly, you know, and lock in that coach, you know. And they they, identified, they got John Gruden out of the booth. They moved quickly, maybe too quickly. The NFL is investigating them. But, but yeah, I mean, I think it was a... Uh, I think it was a good move. Well, I mean, we'll see. Everyone talks. Every question, every press conference, every interview, every column is like, hey, you know, uh, has John Gruden been away from the game too long? Maybe. But see, he seems pretty involved, you know, with the – he has like the – what was that? The Fired Coaches Club or something like that down in Tampa Bay. I think he still lives down there. Get some old fired head coaches around, and they watch game film all the time, always breaking down games, you know. He did the quarterback camps over the summer. That Lions hit. Michael Roberts goes to James. James S. with that. And, you know, did, did Monday Night Football. So he was always, he was watching games all the time. Breaking them down, interviewing people, and giving his thoughts and analysis. There's another Matthew Days for the Browns. That'll go to Jake. Jake, Jake, Jake. Training day. Yo, Jake, 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 Jake. Jake, Jake. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's kept up with the game. The only, like, the only thing I'm, I'm not concerned about whether he's kept up with the game. The only concern is that, like, you know, like the 80-hour weeks that the coaches, like, put in and stuff. And There's Brandon Marshall, but he seems pretty fit, though. 57 out of 99. He's getting back into that mentality, I think, might be the tough thing. Brandon Marshall, championship ticket for the Giants. Ryan. And I think it's good that a, a coach like John Gruden is there. Uh, there's C.J. Beathard, 66 out of 99. Rookie roundup autograph for the Niners, James. Uh, I, I think it's it's good that Gruden is there to, to shepherd 
the Raiders from Oakland to Las Vegas. I think that would be a good transition too. And I think the Raiders, uh, my Raiders took a took a step back. Obviously, there's Sean's Buccaneers right here, fifty one out of one ninety nine. Um, what do the Buccaneers need to do, Sean? What's their next step? Jameis Winston eating too many L's instead of W's. That goes to the Bucks. That goes to Kyle Kramer. Um, but yeah, I, th I think the I think the Raiders are a couple seasons away from from really contending deep into the playoffs. Defense, they got they got they got to figure out that defense. And I think the offense coming back will be okay. Oh, look at this. Matt Ryan, printing plate, and autograph. Wow. Matt Ryan, on plate autograph. That's the one of one that we have not seen in a little while. Are you not entertained? Alex Carmichael with the Atlanta Falcons. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo! What a hit for the Dirty Birds. It's a dirty hit. Might want to do the Dirty Bird right now. Dang. Alex Carmichael. What a hit. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo! Do the Dirty Bird too a little bit later. As for the going back to the Buccaneers though, <laughs> Sean was like, goodness, where do I start? Richard saying fire cutter and draft a real QB. <laughs> Sean saying D line, edge rusher, every secondary position, all the corners, nickels, dimes, safeties, everybody. Ah, Taco Charlton. He might open up a food truck, some sort of restaurant with Socrates Brito, I think. Maybe get the maybe get the bacon's involved in basketball and baseball. I think it's been a slow night, a little slow night in general, SWAT. A lot of them are on the East Coast too. Maybe they're asleep. Maybe they have Saturday night plans. From our Raiders, Eddie Vanderdos. That goes to Tyler Spear and the Raiders. Alright, next box. Four boxes to go. I'm running a little more behind than usual. I'm a little, little sluggish on this break, but I appreciate everyone hanging out with me, chit-chatting with me about football. Excuse me a second. Right. Richard saying, I wish your Cowboys were on a coach hunt. Not a fan? I mean, Jerry, Jerry Jones has been coaching the team for a long time. Now you want to change? Oh, Nancy and Sean B. both replied with, they need a new owner hunt. All right, Ryan. Royal for speed. Have a great night. You got your Evan Ingram and you're out, huh? That's it. 
All right, I'm sure you. I'm sure you'll uh, wake up tomorrow, watch the video for Tua Gallman as well. Uh, have a good weekend, Ryan, and I'll see you on Tuesday. The Cowboys are, are, are a lot like the Raiders. I think they they were another team where where everyone was just like ah. They took a step backwards, took a step backwards like uh, like my Raiders. But they've got individual, good individual pieces there. It just needs to all come together. But yeah, the Cowboys always like feels like a team that just just kind of kind of can't get over the hump, or there's like some sort of roadblock. There's like just there's just something, you know, where there's like some sort of roadblock. Like they get in their own way, they trip over their own feet or something like that. And it's just like I'm not, and I'm not trying to hate on the Cowboys. Like my uh, my uncle lived in Dallas for a very long time. I've, I've got Cowboys fans in my family. You know what I mean? But um, but like they always seem to get in their own way. Like okay, it's like great, you got Ezekiel Elliott, but then you know he's involved in whatever, and that now and the NFL you know jerks him around. And there's always like something that's happening. You know that that just like why can't we just have like a nice couple easy seasons no drama free seasons and see what see what the cowboys can do from there but they just can't seem to get over that final hump you know whatever that whatever it is whether it's coaching or personnel decisions or just straight up bad luck this is some good luck for volleyball nancy nancy rookie ticket cracked ice five out of 25 very possibly your defensive rookie of the year marshawn Lattimore. Nice, Nancy. I mean, if if this guy, if this guy goes nuts on Case Keenum tomorrow, imagine that. Imagine the value of this guy. That is very nice. That's a very nice cracked ice. He's probably one of the few. I want to say he might be one of the few like defensive players in the hobby that might actually. Garner some, uh, some 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 great value on the secondary market. There is Montrevious Adams, forty five out of forty nine. Karen with the pack, so the ladies hitting. Nice one, girls. Thanks for getting in to the break. There it is. Well, is it time? Should we start talking about tomorrow's games? I'll start pulling the guys that are there. Ah, the points. We'll randomize this to one person at the break. If there's more points that come out, we, uh, as everybody knows by now, we collect them all into one lot. Winner take all on the points. Nice, that's for the PC, Nancy. Excellent. CJ Bethard, Rookie of the Year contenders. Not really. Sorry, CJ. Robert Woods, cracked ice. Season ticket cracked ice. 23 out of 25 for Derek and the Rams. So Richard is saying Vikings by 10. What's the line on that game? I think it's Minnesota minus 5. Last I checked. So let's let's get some early let's get some just broad impressions first. So both games, Jacksonville at Pittsburgh, New Orleans at Minnesota. What are your uh, what are your broad just general? Just throw out scores or or by what or point differentials or what? Just kind of give me some broad statements here. So Richard is saying Vikings by ten. Breaking Chris says Vikes twenty, Saints seventeen. So Vikings not covering in his scenario. Nancy, and keep in mind that Nancy is a Saints fan. Uh, there may be a little bias there. But she says Saints by seven. Oh, we're over on the Marlin Max. Boom. Return of the Mac. Colts. Karen Steele with the Colts. And Karen, with that Mac, we are now over. Helping this guy out. I took the over on this. We're over on the back count. Yeah. 
And more Browns, Jabril Peppers. 25 out of 49. That's spicy hit going out to Jake and the Browns. All right, so more impressions. Saints 27-24, says Sean B. Steelers 17-10, says Sean B. SWAT thinks that the Saints will blow them out. Steelers by 14, says Tyler Spear. Brian K says Vikings by 7, Steelers by 10. Richard saying Pittsburgh by 17. Steelers 31, Jags 13 for Chris. So everyone thinking, huh. So everyone thinks that the Steelers are going to win kind of big, right? Why? I mean, I don't think he's going to throw very much. That's the yeah, that's one thing. They'll ride Levy on Bell a lot. They're a different team, you know. They're they're not they're not that kind of team that that got you know embarrassed by the Jaguars early. But I mean, are they? See, see, I don't know if it's the Jaguars defense that's going to give up 31 their offense may give up 31 <laughs> you know what i mean like blake Bortles, ints perhaps nancy saying Steelers by 10 tyler spear saying got to support my hometown team Steelers revenge game sean you're thinking so you so you're thinking under maybe i forget what your score was the so it's gone in the chat let me scroll up oh you said 17 10 so that is the under Richard saying Saints are only weak against the balanced defense. The Vikings D is the most balanced in the league. It is. Sean saying under for sure on that Jacksonville Pittsburgh game. So let's see what. I know the the Bovada lines are a little bit different, but let's just take a quick look at what we have here. So the consensus line is uh, Pittsburgh minus seven, with the over under with the point total at forty one. So or Jacksonville plus seven, or Pittsburgh minus seven. I think I think I would see under in this game as well. But Pittsburgh by seven, I don't know. But Bortles is just, I, I, I just don't have. I don't think, I don't think even the most optimistic, I don't think the, I don't think the most optimistic Jaguars fan believes in Blake Bortles. You know, Blake Bortles' best friends, you know, gun to their head, may, may not, may not. I mean, they probably will, but. So. We'll see. Chris saying uh, Patriots Vikings Super Bowl, home Super Bowl for the Vikings. That would be crazy. Never happened, right? I, it's it's tough, Sean. I, I I know you were asking earlier what my what my picks were for these games. It's tough. I got to do a little more research on this. I can't really think on the fly right now while I'm breaking, but I don't know. Well, we're almost there, so let me do this really quick. I mean, you got to think about what's this guy going to do. You know, this guy has to do work. There's uh, Jamal Agnew. Oh, these are the hits from the previous break. There's Nancy's nice uh, Marshawn Lattimore. Cracked ice. So there's the Agnew for the Lions. James with that one. Yeah, I think experience does come into play a lot. Case Keem not ready for the stage. Says SWAT. There's Jordan Willis for the Bengals. That'll be for Doubly. Doubly on the board. Wow, Bengals Pride saying it's a fact. Jax, that's a hot take. That's a hot take. It's a fact. Jacksonville will win by six. That's his hot take. That's a pretty that's a pretty hot take. Uh, there's more points right here, so we'll combine that with the other points. Uh, not sure about this guy. Like, look, even even Panini knows. 
Even Panini knows. Look at him. He's a running back right here, not a quarterback. He's definitely in halfback mode right here. Even Panini knows. There's Jameis Winston, playoff ticket insert, 176 out of 249. That goes to the Buccaneers. That'll be for Kyle Kramer. There's Kenny G, Rookie of the Year contenders, out of 199. Zay Jones. Haven't seen a lot of Zay Jones autographs in this set. Rookie ticket autograph for Karen and the Buffalo Bills. Brian K. wants to see uh, Steelers Vikings in the Super Bowl. Pulling some of the key players. Alan Hearns a key player? I guess so. Oh, there's Antonio Brown. Come on, Antonio Brown. Where'd he go? There's our one per case, Matt Breida. Is there controver Is there controversy? Is Sam Bradford going to be activated? Will they? Will Minnesota pull in Alabama, and pull Case Keenum in the first half and bring back Sam Bradford in the second half, or is that crazy talk? James with the Niners. I think I already pulled the Big Ben, right? All right, two boxes to go. Well, I guess I better start making some picks. I promised Sean that right around here <laughs> I'd start making picks. But I don't know, Sean. Maybe we started discussing these games too late. Um, my gut says, my gut also says under on that 41-point total for the Jaguars and, and, and the Steelers, although I feel like that could be blown up by, like, a, a pick six or two. You know, that could, that could, just, that could just blow it up. But I think also under because I don't think you think so, Tyler. It's gonna go. To, the ball's gonna go to Juju Smith-Schuster the whole game. I just don't think that they're gonna throw it that often. I think this is the, this is a Le'Veon Bell game. You know, I mean, I mean, they would only throw just to. I mean, it would be play action. The run to set up the pass every once in a while. But if they could just ride Le'Veon Bell uh, the entire time, I think I think that's what they want to do. Slow the game down. Play at play at a Steelers pace. You know, Steelers defense still solid even without Ryan Shazier. So I, I I see under. I just don't know if I see Pittsburgh minus seven. I don't know if I could lay those points. That's that that's where my hesitation comes in. You know, like so like if I had to if I were to put a penny or two on some of these, you know, maybe I put a, a few more pennies on. On the on the point total, uh, on the under, and less pennies on uh, Pittsburgh minus seven. Or maybe you take money line on on the Jaguars in case they win. That could be that could be a good value. That could be a decent value there. But I think the money line is not that big on the Jaguars either. I don't have my other stuff with me that has all that information. But that's my that's my kind of gut sort of instinct there. You know, and uh, Sean was mentioning earlier, is Antonio Brown going to be 100% or a decoy? I don't think he's going to be 100%. I think he, I think his calf is probably close to 100. Like, I mean, I'm not a doctor, uh, but obviously, but um, my impression was that his calf is is pretty much okay. But I think he's under the weather. I think Mike Tomlin sent him home like a couple days ago. He was like, "You're sick. Don't get anyone else sick. Get out of here. Go home." 
chicken soup, you know, and, uh, and orange juice, and lots of sleep, I think is what was prescribed to Antonio Brown. I think physically, like calf-wise, I think he that might be okay from what I'm understanding, but I think he's just under the, under the weather. Is this Michael Jordan flu game for, for Antonio Brown? Maybe. That'll be a big player in that in that game. Jordan Leggett. Jets autograph going to Ryan. Royal for speed. So we'll go into the playoff pile here. I think I already pulled the Drew Brees, right? I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, Chris is saying, oh, this is a randomizer too. That's a nice randomizer. 11 out of 99, Trubisky and Watson. That actually might might yield some dollar dollar bills there. It's nice. First round out of 99. Michael Thomas, isn't he out? No, Brandon Coleman is out. So that does that make Okay, well, let's move on to the uh the the Saints Minnesota game. There's Michael Thomas, 45 out of 249 for uh, for volleyball Nancy, for Nancy, of course. Her Saints traveling to Minnesota. Minnesota minus four and a half. That's a that's a tough one too. I'm trying to think. That's a that's a tough one too. Well, the oh, the point total is forty-seven, but see, both defenses are pretty good too. This might be a sneaky under. Cooper Cup rookie ticket auto. I don't think it's going to be a shootout. I think people forget just how good that Minnesota defense is. Cooper Cup on card autograph. I think this is two breaks in a row. Derek, nice, good, great, great player for the uh, for the Rams this season. Yeah, Nancy's saying she's thankful that they're playing in a closed stadium. This is true. That does help. That does balance things out a lot, actually. There's Raheem Mostert for the Niners and James. This might be a sneaky under play at 47. It's kind of a higher point total. There's a uh, Josh Jones for the Packers for Karen, but the the Saints have have improved so much too. You know, Drew Brees doesn't have to throw 50 times a game. Kamara and Ingram seem like, you know, like 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 Leonard Fournette has felt like he slowed down a little bit. You know what I mean? Towards the end of the season, but because the Saints have both uh, Kamara and Ingram, it seems like they've kept each other fresher later in the season. That's what it seems. That's what it seems like to me. Devonte Mays, another Packer for Karen, so that you know, so you don't, so they don't have to rely on on Drew Brees to throw like fifty times a game, right? And now they've got a, they've got a defense. So they're not forced to be like, okay, like here you are third and long, go for it, Drew. You know what I mean? Like they could be, they could be a little more, they could be a little bit safer on offense in a good way. They could be safer on offense because they know they have a strong defense. But the but you know sometimes there's recency bias. You know what I mean? We've seen the Saints more recently you know, kind of somewhat dispatched the Panthers until the very, very end. But maybe they just took the foot off the gas at the at the end at the fourth quarter of that Panthers game. You know, allowing them to kind of crawl back a little bit. Um, but so you can't forget just how good the Minnesota defense is. It's really, really good. 
That's why I'm taking maybe sneaky under, maybe a couple more pennies on the under 47. Is that crazy? I don't think it is. What were what were everyone's scores from up the up the chat? Last box, folks. Thanks very much, everyone. So I'm seeing Saints 27-24. That's over. Saints by Vikings 2017. I can see more of that kind of score line. Saints by seven, says Nancy. That'd be a big swing on that points. What else? Were there any other scores? I'm just looking through the chat right now. Interesting. Interesting. Guess I'll have to make a pick before I open up all these packs. You know what? I'm going to go... Uh, and this is not just a kiss up to Nancy. I'm going to go with the Saints. I just, I just think that the Saints are just too... Are, are just too well balanced. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I am probably meeting great disrespect to Case Keenum, and I apologize. And Case Keenum could make me look stupid, you know, tomorrow. I'm okay looking stupid. I don't mind that. You know, I just want to make the, the smart play. I, I think that the, that the Saints could cover, Nancy. Let's not get it too ahead of ourselves. I think that the Saints could cover, but that probably means they, you know, they might win at that point, too. Um, but I am going to take the under. But I think it's going to be under. I think it's going to be a close game. None of the offenses are – whoever wins that game, none of those offenses are going to feel good about about how they performed. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's going to be that kind of game. I think it will be good. It will be like a good low-scoring game. But it will be, it'll be pretty hard fought. Like all the classic football cliches, right? All the classic football cliches of – you know, you got to be your third down conversions. Whoever wins third down conversions has got to be is going to be the winner. Who wins the turnover game? You know, it'll be all that sort of cliche, but I think it'll be true. I think the, the margin of error for both of those teams are going to be really small. I just like Drew Brees a little bit better. I just like Drew Brees better than uh, Case Keenum, and I know Case, Case Keenum has done a fine job, but I just you know when it comes to a big divisional game like this. I should look at strength of schedule, too. I think strength of schedule does make a difference, too. Especially if the disparity in the strength of schedule is a lot greater. So those are my tentative picks. Uh, I guess you could join the Facebook group. Maybe I'll maybe I'll drop my final picks because I'm not here tomorrow. So I'll, I'll, I could post my final picks in the Facebook group late tonight when I drink Jameson and, and, and make bets. Yeah, well, Chris, I, yeah, I am actually thinking, like, maybe it's going to be, like, a 17-13 kind of game. Maybe, you know, 2014-2017. You know, like, that's that's 37 on the point total. Maybe maybe a tick higher than that, but, yeah, low 20s is, is, is what I see. Aaron Jones. And, and, and like, this, it, this is, like, one of those picks where, like, it can get blown up easily by, like, by like a, a, an unfortunate fumble by one team, you know, like another autograph for Karen and the Packers. So these picks are for entertainment purposes only, obviously, for the kids listening. I don't want you, uh, you know, going to the junior high school bookie at your school and then be on the run for money. Out of 249, Thomas Rawls, Seahawks. We were not responsible. You were responsible for your own money, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, uh, Jeff Renish. I, I just noticed. Yes, uh, I don't think that I don't think that the 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 team that hosting hosts the Super Bowl has ever been in the Super Bowl since the Super Bowl era. Any guesses on this? Is that the Wayne Gallman maybe? And Bengals pricing. Uh, Bradford could be active. So are, are, it's, is this going to be a Nick Saban Alabama situation?
Ah, our one per case, Chris Wormley is here. For the Purple Birds, that goes to Tim H. Nancy's still looking for that Camara, Camara Cracked Ice. You might have the Offensive and Defensive Rookie of the Year Cracked Ice. That'd be a hell of a break. Almost there, folks. Thanks for hanging with me. I know this break's a little bit longer than usual. Oh, man. Terrell Pryor Sr. For those of you who drafted him on your fantasy teams way too high, there's your veteran ticket autograph. Tyler Spear looking for that last spot mojo, but... <laughs> but it's Terrell Pryor Sr. A lot of expectations for that guy. I mean, he still might be fine, but... This year. You would think. But hey, last spot mojo strikes again, Tyler. MVP contenders, Odell Beckham Jr. out of 199. Uh, Chris, join our Facebook group for that. And I, I would post it there. It's a nice hit, too. I think I dropped the link a little bit higher up in the chat. That's where we like folks to do our do their trading and selling and whatnot. Keeps the chat a little bit cleaner. All right. There you go. See that? That's the way to do it, Sean. All right. What else back here? Okay, so here's what we got. Redemption is rookie ticket variation RPS. I don't think I called Tom Ewald's name at all. I did not call his number all break. And the very last hit, Kareem Hunt. Sweet Kareems are made of these. I'm sure that's a sigh of relief for Tom wherever he's watching. Congrats. There you go. It's a nice way to end it. A little dust on here. All right, folks. Well, let's we're, let's see what happens. You know, I don't know if this guy's gonna play. This guy might be on this guy right here. They're gonna need a lot of this guy, Le'Veon Bell. This guy, Key, that guy, that guy running for his life. This this is what it, that game may look like. This guy needs to not turn it over to guys like this and let this guy do more of the turning over. Those are my jumbled uh, keys to the game. <laughs> All right, folks. Some randomizers. Good luck, everybody. Let's uh, fire up random.org. So we'll go left, right on those round number cards. We'll go Bears, Rams for that Adam Shahi, Gerald Everett. The out of 99, round one numbers was nice. Bears, Texans, assigned quarterbacks. And everybody gets a shot at the points. And it's a winner take all at the points, too. So, 500, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. I like combining them because then you can, it's not like one person will be stuck with 150 points. You get everything. All right. Let's randomize each list. Uh, five and a six, 11 times. Left and right, one, two, one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. The final time, right? Yeah, eleven. Right side. So all the right side teams will get these uh, these round number cards. There's like a handful of them in there. Next one is a numbered round numbers card. One fifty one out of one ninety nine. Eleven times. Bears Rams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on, 11 times. Come on, random.org. And 11. Bears with that one. That goes to Adam Wilson. And the Bears, a little consolation for you, Adam. I don't, I don't think there was like only like maybe one autograph in there for the Bears. Got a shot at this one, too. Mitch Trubisky and Deshaun Watson, 11 out of 99. This is Bears Texans, 11 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11th and final time stays with the Bears. That's okay. Darji got that Watson autograph anyway. Uh, 11 out of 99, Trubisky, Watson. 
Another bear for Adam Wilson. The points. 11 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 the final time. Name on top is Ryan. Royal for speed. Winning randomizers left and right here, Ryan. Congrats. A little bonus for you. We've got some points coming your way. And that's it, folks. That was Contenders 11 from jazbeeshobbyland.com. Well, you want me to recap hits? Sure. Here's a hit recap. DZ, are you just trying to get out of watching the entire video? It's a good video. You should watch the whole thing. All right, so there's the Kareem Hunt. Some round numbers. Terrell Pryor Sr. A lot of Packers. Cooper Cup was nice. Zay Jones. We don't see a lot of Zay Jones. Yeah, it was a pretty good case, wasn't it? Some cracked ice. That Marshawn Lattimore cracked ice was nice. Matt Ryan on plate autograph. Hells to the yeah, as the kids say. They don't say that anymore. Uh, Jamal Williams, Packers, there's a couple of those. Nice Amara Darbos, there's a couple of those. Another Marshawn Lattimore base autograph. Some nice parallels to another Amara Darbo. Got some nice insert autographs, which I thought was cool. It's always nice to see that. Oh, this was pretty cool, the Sterling Shepard. NFL Inc. Don't see a lot of him. Deshaun Watson, of course. That was a big hit. Jake Butt. The tight end joke, of course. There's Jamal Williams again. Nathan Peterman cracked ice. Cracked ices are always cool, no matter who they are. There's TJ Watt for the Steelers. And DZ McFats. I picked, I picked the over. Three Macs. Two Mac Hollins and a Marlin Mac. The over. I win. And there you go, folks. Pick your team 11 in the books. Thank you very much, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. Uh, we will see you next time. Uh, the next case on jazbeeshobbyland.com, the website right there, next case is our last case. For the time being, but it's our last case. So check it out. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.